I gotta say that this Yumi Digi S2 Lite is one fine phone with pretty much no weak points. It's got great build, it's got a nice screen, great battery life, okay performance, nice camera, but there is one problem with this phone and I'm wondering if you can guess exactly what that is. If you want to see more reviews of cheap, great phones, why not subscribe? You won't be disappointed. So did you guys guess what the problem with this phone is? Well, if you guess the price, you would be correct. The original price of this phone is $190, and at that price, you might as well get the Redmi 5 Plus, better in pretty much everywhere, and it's cheaper as well. This phone is currently on sale for about $150, and at that price, it is an easier pill to swallow, but it's still pretty pricey. If it drops to, say, $130, that's an instant buy, that's how good this phone is. Let's start with the build quality. This phone looks great. I love red colored phones and this phone looks absolutely gorgeous. The back of the phone looks really, really nice with the red accent and the nice antenna lines. This phone looks very, very clean and very, very industrial, if you can put it that way. However, there is one problem with the build quality. I don't know if you can see, but there's a scratch on the phone right there. So this phone is actually fairly easy to scratch. So be sure to keep that case on the phone to prevent this from happening to your phone. One really annoying thing, it's a small nitpick, but this fingerprint sensor is really, really hard to use because it's not indented enough. So you, you can't really feel where the fingerprint sensor is and you miss it a lot of the time. On the front, you got fairly small bezels. You have the side and the top and the bottom bezels. They're all quite small. They're not the smallest, but they're small enough to look nice. And overall, this phone looks very good. So as you can see, there's no headphone jack on this phone, but there's a USB-C port at the bottom. Overall, this phone has great build quality. It just depends if you care whether this phone does or does not have a headphone jack. Personally, it doesn't bother me because I switched completely to Bluetooth a few years ago. So even though the Yumi Digi S2 Lite has a 720p display, this is a very good panel with very nice color reproduction and very good color saturation as well. You can see that this panel has very nice contrast. It's a little bit dramatic, but I like it that way. And you can't really tell that this is a 720p display unless you look very closely or you have an extremely detailed photo. Max brightness here is not bad. I can see it even in direct sunlight. And the last thing to note is that there is also Gorilla Glass 4 on the screen. So you don't have to worry as much about scratching it. You just got to worry about shattering the screen accidentally. So the auto here is actually decent. I'm so surprised. There is nice highs. There's some decent trouble and a decent amount of bass. I really like the auto here. It's clear and it's going to be useful for pretty much anything you want to do on a smartphone, including music, TV shows, anything like that. So here's a sample from Killzone, a pretty cool fighting movie with Don Yen and this other guy as well. So let's talk a little bit about battery life. It's honestly better than I thought. If you remember, the older MTK6750 processor is not that efficient, but the 5100 milliamp hour battery combined with the software optimization really makes the uh, battery life pretty good. I can get around seven hours of screen on time. I was expecting like five to six hours, but seven hours easy of YouTube, like heavy stuff, YouTube, and I was browsing Chrome as well. And finally, I was taking photos as well. So it is um, pretty good battery life. It's not the best, but it's definitely more than good enough for regular use. Charging takes about three hours to fully charge. Thank you, Yumi Digi, for putting stock Android back on your phones. And not only that, the UI here is optimized, it's smooth, it's nice to use. It's not as smooth as a OnePlus 5T, but come on, a OnePlus 5T is like 500 bucks. Launching apps here is a little bit slow compared to faster processors like a Helo P23, or even like a Snapdragon 625, there is a little bit of hesitation, longer hesitation when you open these apps, but then again, it's more than good enough for regular use. 
Multitasking is also not bad. It could be better because there's only three gigs of RAM and it does fill up faster than you think. But then again, multitasking is still good enough for regular apps. You can't multitask games though, that's just impossible. So gaming here is pretty great because this screen is a pretty low res 720p display. So the processor doesn't have to work too hard in order to play even intense games, for example, Asphalt 8 or Modern Combat. And as you can see, the frame rate here is nice and smooth and I'm not recording the screen as well. So there aren't any extra frames that are required or power that is required. So all the power gets devoted to running this game at max speed. So as you can see again, very good, very smooth and gaming is going to be a good experience, even the most intense games as well. So a lot of people were asking me to open engineering mode to check network bands because you meet Digi traditionally, sometimes they will enable more network bands than they say in the description. And here that is actually very true. If you look over here, there are four 3G network bands that are enabled, 850, 1900, 2000, and 900. Usually it's 900 and 2000 or 2100 that are enabled, but here it looks like they've enabled 1900 and 850, which means that most carriers in US and Canada, at least the big ones, will be able to get 3G on this phone. So now let's talk about LTE. The sale page has, I think, band 1, 3, 7, and 20, but here they have band 5 and band 8 as well. Now, I'm not too familiar with the bands in US, but I know that in Canada, you will be able to get 4G LTE on Bell as well as Rogers and any other subsidiaries. So if someone who is from the USA who is familiar with the network situation there, comment on the video down below to see which carriers do support band 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, and 20 to see if 4G works on any of the major carriers. Thank you very much. So as we were talking about before, I get 3G and 4G network connectivity very easily on this phone. And as you can see, the speeds are pretty good. They're not like amazing like the Ocotel K10, which gets almost double what this gets, I think like 60, but this here gets 37. Definitely pretty good speeds and also eating up my data like crazy. And as you can see, the upload speeds are also actually pretty good. They're like what, 23, 24, 25 megabits a second which is more than enough for pretty much anything that you're doing unless you're uploading a YouTube video or something. Wi-Fi speeds are a little bit slow. Bluetooth is okay and GPS is actually not that great. It jumps around a lot during navigation. Hopefully Yumi Digi can fix the GPS, but I don't think that's fixable. Now the camera, like dude, Yumi Digi really stepped their game up. I might get some hate mail from Xiaomi fanboys, but the camera on this Yumi Digi S2 Lite is almost as good as the Redmi 5 Plus in many, many areas. There's so much detail in photos and the color reproduction is just beautiful. It's on par and maybe even a little bit better than the Yumi Digi S2 Pro, which is almost double the price of this Yumi Digi S2 Lite. I absolutely love the photos taken in great lighting conditions. No question about that. It's so easy to take good photos with this camera. You don't even really have to try that hard. The other thing that's really easy is moving objects like my dog. Most of the photos it captures of my moving dog is without blur, which is very impressive. Some photos he's moving fast enough that it's blurry. And this is actually one area where the Redmi 5 Plus is better. It can take faster moving objects than this Yumi Digi S2 Lite. Oh, and the one weird thing for this phone is that there is actually no HDR mode in the phone. I think it's automatic, but honestly, dude, it's so good. HDR only enables when it needs to and it never washes anything out. In fact, it might actually be better than the Redmi 5 Plus's HDR mode. However, the one area where it's a bit weak is that some photos still look boring. They aren't really spruced up very well. The blurry mode or the bokeh mode is pretty bad, so I don't use it. And low light is still pretty bad in this phone as well. The front facing camera is also very weak and photos look pretty bad. Now moving on to the video quality, it's not the greatest. It's 1080p maximum and the quality is not as crispy as you would like, but it's usable. It's definitely better than the Ocotel K10.
I am so surprised by how good the camera is even when it's using the older MTK chipset. And the rest of the phone is really very well built. It's solid and every part of the phone is well made, it's well designed, put together. This is probably the best budget Yumi Digi phone I've ever used. And like I said before, the problem with this phone is nothing to do with the hardware or the software, it's the price. Regular price of 190, no way. A Redmi 5 Plus beats this any day and for cheaper too. 150 bucks on sale, which is what it is right now. No, the Redmi Note 4 beats that any day. But if this drops to 130 bucks, which I doubt it will, but let's say it does. This competes with the Redmi 4X and I truly believe that the Yumi Digi S2 Lite is a better phone than the Xiaomi Redmi 4X, especially because it's got stock Android as well. So my conclusions, this Yumi Digi S2 Lite is the perfect budget device with a price tag that is too high. If you want to see more honest videos like these, consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.